Hello everyone and welcome to another Friday new product post. We've got a couple products this week so let's go ahead and jump right in and see what we've got. Here we have the Flycam 1 V2. Um, this is the box for it and what this is is it's a very small embeddable video camera. So if you have an RC, helicopter, plane, vehicle, whatever, you can take this little video camera and embed it on there and get real-time footage. Um, let's pick up this one. This is what the board actually looks like and we can see it is pretty darn small. That's a USB connector right there and then we've got the little camera on the end here. Now the camera is a 720 by 480 pixel camera so it is 720p resolution. It will do full 30 frames a second. Don't expect anything magical in terms of video quality. It's decent about on par with like a webcam or maybe like a um, cell phone video camera, but the board has a lot of really nice features. Uh, you plug it into USB and it actually acts as a mass storage device so you can copy directly off of the micro SD card slot right there. It has this really simple status light which I'll explain later. It explains different states that the recorder is in, if it's recording, if it's not recording, if it's doing pictures or video, and of course it does pictures and video. Uh, you can have it do continuous video, or you can have it do a single still picture, or you can do a series of still pictures. The other thing that's interesting about this board is you can power it directly from a LiPo battery, or you can plug this little pigtail directly into an RC um, receiver. So if you have a remote control radio and receiver for your um, helicopter or whatever, you can plug this directly into there and then you can use your buttons or an extra channel on your radio to actually control this. So you would plug this into your plane, turn it on, and then you'd use your controller to actually start and stop recording. So it's pretty cool. It's really made to be embedded into an RC application. Um, really the only downside to this is the instructions are a little bit sparse and there's a couple things that are kind of quirky with it. Um, I'm going to explain kind of the ins and outs and give you just kind of a quickie um, video instructional manual on how to use this. It is really simple, but some of the instructions be kind of confusing. They're in German. It's a little odd. Um, so let's run through how to use this, and then we can show some example videos um, of some things that we did with this. Um, the first thing that I would like to state is that the units we're shipping, um, at least as of the date of this video, do not have the updated firmware they're actually sending out 640 by 480 video, so you will need to update the firmware if you want to get the full 720 by 480 video. Um, the instructions are kind of interesting and a little bit vague. Um, through a little bit of trial and error, I figured out how to do this. Essentially what you want to do is you want to download the drivers on the product page. When you download those, follow the first set of instructions. You um, run the I think it's install, reinstall, something like that. Um, follow the instructions, do the first line. That will actually install the drivers for this on your computer. Once those are actually installed on the computer, you need to reboot. Once you've rebooted, you're going to plug this in to the USB. So just plug it in. But when you do that, hold down the selection button. Holding down the selection button makes it not show up as a mass storage device. Now Windows will not recognize what this is and it will prompt you to do the driver installation. When you do the driver installation, those files that you copied over earlier will just magically appear and this will be recognized and you will, you know, have this working and have all the drivers for it. So, first step, install the program, then reboot, then plug this in while holding um, the button down. That will install the drivers. Now it's time to actually update the firmware. So, unplug it, Make sure it's off this whole time. Um, plug it back in while holding the button. And at this point, now you can run that second program, which will update the firmware. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Um, the other thing I'd like to talk about is the battery connector. The battery connector on this is a lot smaller than the normal um, battery connector on our LiPos, as you can see. It does not work directly with our LiPos. However, we do have um, this little cable, which I've listed in the Relateds, um, this little guy. And all we've done is take a normal LiPo and actually solder this cable in so we can use either one. The cable is not perfect, um, but it will fit into this socket right there. So 
boom, it does work. Um, however, you might need another battery, you might need something different, but if you have one of these and want it to work, you can just use that cable. The next thing I want to talk about is the modes. You can see right on here that it has a layout of the different modes. They're actually reversed. Um, they're saying that record is green and ready is red. That's actually opposite. Record is red and ready is green. So think green light go and then red recording. Um, so if we just hit this on, we should be able to see this green light turn on. So there it is, that's green. This is ready to go now. So just make sure you have a, a micro SD card plugged into it, which we'll do here. Plug it into there. And now we're ready to go. So it's on, we've got a card in there, we've got a battery plugged in, and we'll just hold down the select button. And it changes to red. Now it's recording. So now it's recording video. And all you have to do is hit the select button again. It stops and we're good. So we'll just go ahead and turn this off. Um, now, as I said before, you can use this cable over here to control that starting and stopping with a radio controller. So instead of having to press the button every time, you can just use this over here. Unfortunately, there's no feedback, so it might be easiest just to press the button before you launch your plane or whatever and just make sure it's recording at the time. Um, another little interesting thing about this setup is we're not really sure exactly how this is all buffering and recording to the SD card. Um, but if you just remove the card or just take power away, whatever you are recording will just be lost. So ultimately, you want to be careful that when you're recording it, you actually physically stop it and then turn it off. Um, we found that just by yanking out the power, yanking out the SD card, we get either something corrupt or we just get absolutely nothing there. So it is a little finicky like that, but it has really good battery life. We've been using this battery you know, the entire time and we have no issues with this battery working. Um, so it is nice. The audio recording is good and we actually did a couple little demos of this around the office. We had um, Pierce actually connect this to his dog's collar and had him run around the office. Oh, he's got a camera. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. And in addition to that, we decided to throw this off the roof. Uh, we didn't want it to just slam down into the ground, so we came up with a really simple solution. We actually took grocery bags and used alligator clips to make these parachutes. And so all we did is wrap this whole thing up in foam and then tape this on, and we made a parachute. And surprisingly, it worked really well. Oh, wow, look at all those Parachute. This is the uh, Flycam 1, and we've wrapped it in some uh, foam from an IC tray and uh, unwrapped that up in tape. You ready? So there you have it, the Flycam 1 V2. Check out the um, product page for all the firmware updates and all the other information about it, and get ready to start recording video. And lastly, we've got the MPU 6050. Um, a lot of people have requested this IC, and now we have it on a breakout. Um, this is the same thing that's used in the Arju IMU V3 by um, DIY Drones. Um, it is a combination triple axis accelerometer and triple axis gyro that you can use the input to a magnetometer to form a full nine degree of freedom board. Um, we've got it in this little breakout board with these two manning tabs. So if you're looking to prototype with the MPU 6050, we have a really convenient breakout board for you. So there you have it, another Friday new product post.